The year is 1949, and the National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics, or NACA, has been gifted 50 twin-engine cargo planes by the Air Force. It's a fleet aching from years of nonstop service during the Berlin airlift. Soon, they'll be put out of their misery, but they're not destined for the boneyard. Instead, they'll go down in a literal blaze of glory. In the name of safety, of course. Naka's plan was simple. Each of these planes would be purposefully crashed and burned so that the pre-NASA organization could attempt to solve the problem of crash fires and study exactly how and why planes would burst into flames after a rough landing. In today's world of computer models and digital sensors, this might be possible without setting a single plane ablaze. But in the late 1940s, a more spectacular approach prevailed. After all, NACA was no stranger to full-scale tests. As illustrated in a 1935 issue of Popular Mechanics, the agency did much of its aerodynamic research in wind tunnels large enough to fit entire planes, with gusts driven by gigantic 4,000 horsepower propellers. But blowing up planes is not an indoors job, so Naka set out to a runway at a World War II arsenal in Ohio for its tests. Here, each victim plane was sent down the runway at full speed and without a pilot, held on course by a guiding rail. At the end of the runway, the plane would slam into an embankment that would annihilate its landing gear and clip its propellers, sending the plane into a catastrophic but not fatal skid. This was the kind of hard landing that passengers and pilots could theoretically survive if the plane didn't immediately burst into flames. And burst into flames they did. To understand how and why the infernos would occur, Naka took great pains to track every collision detail it could. Different combustible fuels were dyed different colors so that their spread could be seen on camera. These combustibles are fuel, hydraulic fluid, lubricating oil, and alcohol. And each doomed plane was outfitted with instruments to record temperatures and other variables, sending their data to a rudimentary, fireproof black box. These tests helped Naka develop a suppression system that could be used to prevent horrific fires, but at the cost of about 1,200 pounds of extra weight. Commercial airlines were not thrilled at the prospect, and since Naka had no real regulatory power, it instead produced a fiery documentary in attempts to convince airlines otherwise. The resulting fire spreads rapidly through the fuel mist to produce this wall of flame. In the end, many airplane manufacturers did end up adopting the kind of modifications that Naka developed and suggested, but on their own terms and in their own time. And while Naka's tests may not have been immediately effective, they were immediately impressive. The footage stands as testament to the brute force experimentation of the early days of aviation, testing that's no less incredible to watch today.